Hello and welcome to The Sheer Luck Show. I'm Jane Wogan and I'm super excited to be back in the studio with some amazing content. From fashion to beauty, autumnal food ideas, some fashion week highlights and a truly inspirational interview. On today's show, Lou and Charlotte have pinpointed some key trends from the catwalk for this season. They break down how to wear them and most importantly, the high street dupes out there. Polly and Winnie are treated to a makeover with the best new inns at Space and K. Watch how they get a radiant dewy glow with just a few choice products. Content creator Summer Pine has created a series of autumnal recipes which are just what the doctor ordered as the weather changes and salad just doesn't cut it. We also have a roundup from Milan Fashion Week with the Dahlia Salsa Mendy. And finally, I chat to the inspirational Emma Campbell, a woman who has beaten cancer as a single mother of four and has come out fighting. She's here for Breast Cancer Awareness Month to tell us her story. But first, the fashion team are here with the key trends you need to know about this autumn. It's the beginning of the new season, so how could we not round up our favourite trends for the months ahead? From the feminine looks that grace the runways to the cool everyday collections you can easily replicate, here's our guide to the four biggest trends to try this autumn winter. Hailey Slimane's Celine set the precedent for the new collegiate trend everyone's loving this season. Oversized trenches, hoodies, baseball caps and stomping teenage attitudes may have been a departure for the brand, but it was certainly effective, inspiring legions of street star stars to replicate the look. There are two ways to channel the trend. Either try pussy bow blouses, long boots and tweed jackets for a Blair Wardolph-esque take, or adopt that 90s, slightly grungier approach with a cap, collegiate sweatshirt and an oversized jacket. From Paisley Prince to Shearling Gilets, folksy fashion always rolls back round come autumn, but this year it isn't just the usual suspects championing the trend. Alongside Anna Sui, Etro and Isabel Moron sat an unlikely roster of folk-inspired collections, including Zimmerman and Bauman, whilst naturally Ulla Johnson is the brand who has best diffused the look into stores. We are obsessed with her bubble knits and flowing skirts. Crop waistcoats are having an unexpected comeback too, so we recommend trying three people for a nod to the trend. Everyone in the fashion world has now cottoned on to the fact that dressing in head-to-toe neutrals is the easiest way to look polished and chic. We love winter whites at Sherlux, and brands like Chloe and Isabel Moron seriously indulged us this season with pale twists on knitwear, shearling, coats, tailoring and more. The perfect antidote to gloomy black and grey. Influencer Anouk Eve is the ultimate champion of the look. Her Instagram is essentially a beginner's guide to getting it right. Leather is always relevant for autumn, winter, but this year designers experimented with the fabric more than ever before. Bombers, relaxed trousers, trenches and shirting all got the leather treatment and there's a little bit of burgundy around, but actually unlike in previous seasons, it is classic black that is reigning supreme. One of the easiest looks to replicate IRL, we suggest moving away from the traditional biker and instead trying loose fit tailoring. And if you dare, there is space for double leather this season too. That's it for this month's trend report. We hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more fashion and style advice. Thanks so much, girls. That was super useful. I'm ready to shop now. Now, we all want to get a radiant glow with just a few products. And that's exactly what Polly and Winnie got when Space NK's resident makeup artist gave them a glow up courtesy of new brand Rose Inc. this week. Over to you, girls. Hi, I'm Renee from Space and K and I am the colour trainer there and I will be demonstrating to you how to achieve a radiant, glowy, easy look that can be worn anytime, anywhere featuring Rose Inc, Hourglass and Charlotte Tilbury on the gorgeous Winnie and the gorgeous Polly. So to begin with Polly's skin, I am going to prep her skin with the Radiant Serum from Rose Inc and I'm just going to get a pump and a half onto the back of my hand and then with my fingertips I'm going to warm that in all over her complexion and you can just see it gives the skin the most gorgeous glow. Um, so now we're going to start off with Winnie's coverage using the concealer and this is in the shade 180. So I just have Rosie's Sculpting Concealer Brush and I'm just working that product into the brush. So now for Polly's base, as she has such gorgeous skin already, we want to enhance but not cover up too much. So I'm going to actually mix these two together which is the serum and her 
concealer to create a customized base. And you can see it just gives the skin a really gorgeous sheen, effortless coverage. And you can build it as you go without it looking cakey or feeling uncomfortable. So here I'm just applying from the center of the face, buffing out. And it's just so quick and easy to do. And you can do this with your fingers if you want to, if you're not really a brush person, or you can just see how easy it was to blend away with one single brush. So what I'll do next is just get the concealer without any mixture of the serum and apply it on the inner corners of Polly's eyes, maybe a little bit on the lid, just to kind of color correct and brighten that little bit more. Um, and then her complexion should be done. So now that we've done her base, we are going to use shade 190 as a really nice, subtle, bronzy contour effect. So I have the shade in 170 to gently contour and slightly sculpt Polly's face. So now we're going to finish off the complexion with the blush divine in the shade Azalea. This is a gorgeous, creamy blush that just blurs the face completely. And you can see it just gives the skin the most gorgeous, glossy finish without it being like shiny. Okay, so next we're now going to frame the brows and I am using the Clear Brow Pomade Gel first, which is a really beautiful hybrid. So it conditions the brow hairs and then the pomade aspect holds the hairs into their desired position for a really strong, firm hold. And this just helps you encourage a more of a fluffier, fuller brow. I'm just going to use the tinted brow gel within Rosie's range to just fill in those gaps and just to give more of a fuller, fluffier effect. And I'm just using the tip of the applicator first to kind of get that pigment in there. So to finish off Polly's complexion and add a little bit of jazz to the eyes, I am using Hourglass's newly released Christmas palette, which is stunning, it has unlimited shades, again, vegan and cruelty free, so speaking to a very similar message um, as Rose Ink. And to begin, I'm just going to use this big shade here, which is a gorgeous radiant powder. And I'm just going to use this to just kind of sweep across Polly's T-zone to kind of set everything into place and just to control a little bit of that shine. I'm then going to use a little bit of this bronzer shade here and just skim that along her hairline and just reinforce that warmth that we did earlier. And I'm using this gorgeous bronzer shade in the top corner here and I'm just going to blend that into Winnie's temples and kind of diffuse onto the eye and that's going to help bridge the eye and the complexion together. So I'm just going to take that bronzer shade into Polly's crease and this is just going to add a little bit of dimension to the eye. So now I'm going to whack on some mascara onto Winnie's eyes just to give the eyes a more wider, brighter look and I'm going to do this with the Pillow Talk mascara from Charlotte Tilbury. Okay, now to finish off the whole look, let's just pop something on the lip and what else apart from the blush that we used already. So the Blush Divines are a lip and cheek product, so completely versatile and multi-use. And I love a monochromatic look, so I'm going to use the exact same shade on Polly's lips and just dust it over. So here I'm just applying the blush onto the corner of her eyes with my finger and blending into the blush on the cheek. Again, just to mesh and tie everything together so it bridges as one look. So here we have created a really gorgeous, radiant, wearable look using Rose Ink, Hourglass and Charlotte Tilbury, all amazing new products at Space & K. You guys both look amazing and that serum is insane. Next up, Summer Pine has been really busy making a series of autumnal recipes with seasonal produce, just to give us a bit of inspiration in the kitchen now the nights are drawing in. First up is her lentil soup, which she makes look super easy and utterly delicious. You won't want to miss this. So this time of the year for me is all about getting cozy and warm and eating comforting foods. And this recipe is all that in a bowl. I like to call this my spicy veg and red lentil soup. So I'm using lots of fresh 
seasonal ingredients, so sweet potatoes and onions and carrots, but I'm spicing it up with some Thai flavors. So I've got some lovely spices here. Uh, I've got some coriander and lime, all those typical flavors you would expect um, from Thailand. So what we're gonna do is start with a paste, so easy. So we're gonna start with a bunch of coriander. I put the stalks in and all, so I just might wanna rip it apart, put it in like that. We're going to use lots of garlic. So I've got about half a clove or maybe like six. Of course, you wanna put your spices in because there's quite a lot of ingredients. It's not that spicy. So at the end, you can add more chili if you want it really spicy. Kaffir lime leaves, fresh kaffir lime leaves are the best if you can get them. And shallots, I've got about five shallots here. And then I'm just going to put my lime in. I've got two limes. And then we're just gonna add a splash of fish sauce to help combine it all. And again, it's that nice salty flavor that you expect. Okay, so now all we need to do is whiz that up. You really want to get this to a nice paste consistency. So you'll see that some of the garlic and onion have, have risen up to the side. So you just push it, push it down with a spatula. Smells so good. Okay, so I've done my paste, um, which is looking really lovely. I was just thinking you could also add ginger and lemongrass if you choose. That's why this dish is actually quite versatile. You just add the ingredients that you can get your hands on. So we're gonna start by stir frying off the paste into this lovely Le Creuset pot. I'm going to get a couple of tablespoons of coconut oil. So I'm just waiting for that to melt down that's looking lovely all right so now i'm going to add the paste so what we want to do here is just stir fry it now we're going to add a few chopped garlics as you can see i love garlic and to that we're going to add onions we're just going to let that fry until the onions become opaque now we just need to add the rest of the ingredients i'm going to start by adding the autumnal vegetables. We're just gonna stir that up. Now you just wanna get all the flavors mixed in here. Now I'm gonna add the chicken stock. I've put a liter in here. And as you go along, you'll want to stir. And if it's getting too dry, just add more chicken stock as you go. To this, I'm going to add red lentils. So we're just gonna give that a nice stir and then we're going to put the lid on and let it cook. Okay, so this has been cooking for about 10 minutes and it's always good just to check how it's going. And as you can see, it's starting to reduce and you just need to give it a little bit of a stir. I'm really happy with the consistency there. Now I'm going to pour in the coconut milk so it's nice and creamy. Give that a nice stir. And now that's ready to serve. Okay, so now that the soup is ready, I want to add some beautiful toppings. So I'm gonna to put some coriander and lime, chilies, and I'm gonna to top with seasonal mushrooms. I just go for whatever's at my local grocer's and you can't beat garlic mushrooms. Okay, so we just want to stir fry the garlic and then we're gonna throw in some mushrooms. You can use different varieties. And of course, you're going to add a bit of salt and pepper. And then just stir them for a couple of minutes. You don't want to overcook them. And now I'm just going to add a little bit of balsamic vinegar just to give it a bit of sweetness. And now we're ready to plate. Okay, so it's ready ready to serve up and oh my goodness that smells so nice okay so all we need to do is put it in a bowl and I like to add toppings just to give it that extra wow factor and to show off the the spices and the herbs that we've used this is I'd say like a hug in a bowl as corny as that sounds but it's so comforting and I make a big pot like this and it lasts for days for our family right so I'm just going to top with some coriander I can even put some chili on there like so and lime and then I'm just going to finish off with the mushrooms like 
so. So there you have it, my spicy veg and red lentil soup. I think anyone would be happy to see that on a table on a cool autumn's day. What's up guys, it's Iralia Salsamendi and we are here in Milan Fashion Week and I am bringing you along for a jam-packed day. I'm talking one of the hottest shows, a Reese, a presentation, a cocktail, and you are coming along with me. But first things first, today's outfit is from Stan Studio and of course I have my Manu Atelier purse. Alrighty, let's get this day started. Alrighty guys, so we are behind the scenes at Jenny right before the show, the final fitting. We have the models, the designer um, here for the final, final, final pieces being put together and I cannot wait for the show. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so I had to do a quick outfit change in the hotel for one of my favorite shows, and that is Alberta Ferretti. I am wearing Alberta Ferretti thanks to Luisa Villaroma. Uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite shows, so I cannot wait. What a way to start Milan Fashion Week, and you are gonna be right there with me. Let's go. So we just got out of Alberta Ferretti. I changed because we are going to a Tory Burch presentation. I wasn't in New York Fashion Week to see them, so I'm so excited they're in Milan. I love Tory and I love that I'm getting to show you their latest collection. Alrighty, this is the last outfit of the day and it's for the Todd's cocktail, so let's go! Welcome back, that looked so good. Summer, thank you. Now I'm joined in the studio by the inspiration that is Emma Campbell. Emma is an author, columnist, speaker, and long-term cancer thriver. She's known on social media as Limitless M, a handle she adopted following her third cancer diagnosis in 2019 to serve as a daily reminder to herself that we are all limitless and capable of so much more than we often realize. She's here at the beginning of Breast Cancer Awareness Month to tell us her story. Emma, welcome. Thank it's a pleasure you. to meet you. It's lovely to be here. We've all, you. we've been chatting in the studio for an hour now yeah. and you've so much to talk about. Yeah. But let, just to let people know, you had your first diagnosis in 2010. 2010. Just, it was six months after you gave birth to triplets? Yeah, I was diagnosed in June 2010 and the babies were yeah, coming up to six months old. And you already had Jake. Jake, who was nearly seven. Wow. And then, I mean, when I heard that, I was just blown away. I know. And then again in 2014? Yeah. So I had the secondary diagnosis in 2014. Mm -hmm. And then my third sort of recurrence, whatever you want to call it, at the, end of two, at the beginning of 2019. So it's been an 11-year kind of struggle. Well, it's, a funny, it's funny, isn't it, sort of finding the right word to use, because I think... It's been a really intense decade, I'll yeah. say that. And there's been some incredibly difficult moments and very dark moments. But there's also been a lot of growth and a yeah. lot of real heightened appreciation for the good bits. You're de I mean, you wrote the book uh, three years ago, All yeah. That Follows. Yeah, all that, all that Followed, a story uh, of cancer kids and the fear of leaving too soon. And then, which, I mean, when I read that, I just thought, oh, my God, because as a, as a mom... Yeah. 
uh, we always we worry so much about our children yeah. and for, for you to to look that straight in the eye yeah. three times yeah. it's, it's just heartbreaking but yeah. you're so after speaking to you for the past hour you're so upbeat and positive I think I mean I'm really aware that I'm in a really fortunate place at the moment with my health. Yeah. So I'm on targeted chemotherapy. I'm at the Royal Marsden Hospital every three weeks. I am a cancer patient and I will always be a cancer patient. And as anyone who's been affected by cancer knows, the, you know, and if certainly if you're, you're living with it in the long term, that stability mm -hmm. is, what you, is, is what you want. And I'm really fortunate that right now I'm in a stable place. Um, my cancer is you know, showing no signs of activity. And that's, that means that life in lots of ways is, is pretty normal, which is amazing. Yeah. So it's much easier at the moment to be in a, in a, in a positive mindset. I think the challenge is when you're having a wobble or there's something that's cropped up or you're waiting for results or you're not feeling well, that's yeah. when the, you've got to really pull on those resources. So I, I, I'm in a good place right now and I really acknowledge that, but it hasn't, you know, it, it, takes it hasn't come naturally. <laughs> yes. It hasn't come naturally. It's taken a kind of, I guess, being at those real lows. Well, the, the, I think um, for you, which I loved reading about, was you're a runner. Yeah. And you took up running actively, I think, back in 2019. Yes. It, yeah. And so you're also com a columnist for Women Running Women's UK. Running Magazine. And I just, you said yourself, it's really helped you mentally to um, break through, you know, negative feelings yeah. that you're having and you're running this Sunday for uh, in the marathon running running the London marathon on Sunday raising money for the Royal Marsden um, fantastic which is like I said my hospital I did the virtual marathon last year yeah when COVID you know we were all in lockdown um, and that was incredible but doing the real thing yeah I'm really nervous. I don't feel quite prepared. I'm not quite where I wish I was training wise, but oh, I know stop. that, oh, you know, the, the crowds <laughs> You're and everything, doing it. the adrenaline <laughs> will carry me through and I don't care about how long it takes. Of course. Yeah. As you long know. as it takes. I mean, the fact yeah. that you're taking part and, and yeah. you know, not many people can say they run a marathon, especially th people that have yeah. been through cancer yeah. three times. Yeah. Now dealing with family and mm. I know because kids don't always understand um, human emotions, yes. as we were discussing. How did yes. your little ones and your husband, Dave, your, uh, deal with 2014 and 2019? Yeah. Well, just to, I mean, to go right back to the beginning, when I was first diagnosed, Jake was nearly seven. Mm -hmm. So I remember very clearly having the mummy's got a lump conversation yeah. with him. And, you know, he was dressed in his Spider-Man outfit. He kind of and I sat down, I'd brought the book, you know, and I'd really thought about how to do it. And I was really nervous. And he was like, it's like, you know, mummy's got a lump, but the doctors are going to give me some really strong medicine to make it go away. Mm -hmm. Okay, mum, you know, what's for dinner? It was that kind of yeah. almost, and that's the beauty of being a, a six-year-old, you know, when you're kind of so in the present. And obviously the babies were tiny, so that wasn't an issue. Second time round in 2014, I mean, I met Dave, my husband, yeah. the day after that first diagnosis. Oh, wow. So our relationship began, and we always say we kind of, our dating days were in the chemo ward. You know, <laughs> we, we were, he was there from the word go, emotionally, physically, in every way. And it was, what a, I mean, I mean incre a... incredible, incredible. Yeah. So um, he sort of stepped into that, onto that path with me. Okay. And Jake was older, it was it was harder, and then with it, with the little ones, second time round, they were they just started reception. Yeah. Um, but I didn't lose all my hair second time round, so again, it was harder uh, for them. Yeah, to, it, to it know. was it was less of a dramatic kind of right, okay. look at mummy, um, and they they used to me. They're very used to me. My kind of ongoing rant is, I'm tired. I'm just tired, and that so that's <laughs> what they kind of raise their eyebrows to. And I guess in a way, that's the main thing that I kind of struggle with a lot. A lot of the time is the sort of fatigue of treatment and stuff. And um, feeling, feeling like you need to, you know, because mums are supposed to yeah, be superwoman. Yeah, they're, they're and supposed they supposed to be there all the yeah. time. So in a way, again, it's like I'm grateful that they they've not really known any different. They know I'm a right. cancer patient, but I don't think they live in a state of heightened. Is mum okay? Every so often, it, it's an interesting thing. It's part of it of all our of all our lives. It's our yeah. normal in a way, and then occasionally something might pop up on the TV, or there might be a charity campaign, mm -hmm. 
and they'll watch a story of someone else and they'll look at me and suddenly then there'll be a flurry of questions. We were discussing that Jake had said uh, something very profound to you yeah. that stuck yeah. with you. Yeah, it was a kind of pivotal moment for me. It was one of those life moments that I feel set me on a path that I needed to step onto yeah. um, after years of struggling so much with the emotional side of it. What did he say? It was the, it was the day of the third diagnosis okay. and I just had that phone call saying, yep, yeah, your cancer's progressed and this is what needs to happen. And obviously, you know, everyone's in a state of shock. Mm -hmm. And Jake came home from school earlier than expected and found us all in the kitchen. And I took him out for a walk on his own just to have some time with him. And he's very quiet, he was 15, insular boy on his PS4, not saying very much. <laughs> And he just listened to me talking and explaining things. And at the end of the conversation, as we were heading back home, he said, mum, you've just got to live like it's not there. Mm -hmm. And that was honestly, it kind of stopped me in my tracks. Um, it felt like a really, really profound statement. And it felt almost like wisdom that had come from somewhere else. Because how can this 15 year old mm -hmm. say something like that, say, speak the truth in such an incredible way. And it was just what I needed to hear because I'd spent my whole life and certainly the last however many years as a cancer patient doing the opposite of that. I was living as though I was dying. That's how I kind yeah. of felt I lived before. I used to live as though I'd been told the worst mm -hmm. and I hadn't been. You know, well, that's just your. You see, that's so. What's so great about you is that I. I know I, what I want to ask you is you. You found running that has been phenomenal for you. Yeah. And you, we spoke a lot earlier about manifesting good thoughts and and, yeah. and feeling, as you said, always being grateful. Yeah. As someone that maybe has been given a their first cancer diagnosis, mm. what advice would you give them? Because obviously, as you said, not everyone runs. Everyone no. has to find their thing. Everyone what would be your Advice. I think with the first diagnosis and hopefully what will then be your only diagnosis, yeah. I think it's understanding that anything you're feeling is completely normal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm in the place I'm at now because I've had so many years to kind of go through all the different stages. As a newly diagnosed person, let yourself feel the feelings. Um, accept and allow any help that you can into your life. Don't, don't, you don't have to be brave. You don't have to put a brave face on it. Mm -hmm. Surrender to it. But just do whatever you can to kind of, whatever you can that gives you a feeling of hope and optimism and courage. And whether that's from other people's stories. And that's something I didn't have access to at the beginning. Right, okay. I was too scared to look for other people's stories. Whereas now there's so many amazing mm -hmm. women in particular kind of sharing their stories online. And you can, you can just look from the sidelines. You don't have to, and just, just, seek the positive stories don't google you know don't go on to online <laughs> everyone says that don't Google. you know um don't look at the headlines because the headlines are always the, the the frightening headlines and the tragic stories and just allow yourself to imagine the you that will emerge at the mm -hmm. end of this at the end of that six months or that di very difficult year and you will be a different person but you'll be a different person in a way that brings gifts with it as well as much as you know yeah we, we wish this wasn't happening and just focus on what makes you feel good find anything you can in each moment each day that gives you a feeling of of relief and manages to kind of turn the volume down on those those thoughts of yeah catastrophic thinking or the worst possible scenario now you're in remission right now and you're writing your second book yes slowly <laughs> but, as, yeah, but as slowly. A, when you were telling me this I thought you had three kids, you have four kids, yeah. and you wrote one book? I mean, the fact that you're writing a second book is amazing. Now, what do you want to focus your second I book on? I think the second book is very much, I'm very at, the, at the, the early stages, but it's very much, I hope, going to be a book where I, I guess my, the story will continue to be weaved through, okay. you know, but the kind of emotional toolbox that I've gathered over the last few years and the resources that I draw on that have made managing my mm -hmm. illness or living with a potentially life-limiting disease and that scary word, cancer, there's no scarier word, is there? No. Um, mm -hmm. And what, how I have now approach it and how that's just <clears throat> turned me, I think, as I said to you earlier, from being someone who was crippled by a fear of death yeah. to someone who now realises that, you know, chooses to embrace life 
and that actually it's safe for me to look to the future because if I allow myself to think those big, expansive, joyful thoughts, then that none of us know what's going to happen, but somehow it's the realisation that it's safe for me to let myself be happy and to seek mm -hmm. joy. It felt too frightening before because everything felt so... As if you would almost yeah, lose it. I was yeah, all, I would almost kind of set off a chain of catastrophic events. It's, the fear was so crippling. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that that's something that a lot of people can relate to. It's To be living in a permanent state of heightened anxiety and fear is a very natural state to be in when you've had a diagnosis. Of course. But anything yeah. we can do to, to, to turn that down and to kind of to minimise that boulder that kind mm -hmm. of, whether it's a cancer boulder or whether it's a, a boulder of whatever it is that kind of blocks out the sun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, I'm yeah. always, I just always think, how can I shrink it? How can I shrink it? How can I shrink the noise? How can I, how can I let the light in? And it doesn't mean that I always succeed, but I just feel passionately about doing whatever I can to just shift my thoughts in a direction that serves me. Now, with um, for everyone out there, I know. So, you know, with your first diagnosis, is there any advice you can give to women, especially um, about signs they should look out for? You know, do you feel mammograms, are, is, again, are incredibly yeah. important? I think we know, we know, don't we? We're, we're reminded constantly the importance of checking. And I think it's finding a balance. It's not, it's not becoming consumed by, mm -hmm. you know, still more, you know, we know that numbers are increasing and we need, to, but we, it's all about, I think, knowing what's normal for you. Okay. You know, knowing our breath, every woman's breasts are different, our bodies are different. It's knowing your own normal. Obvious the lumps, any puckering, any you know inverted nipples, redness, um, or pain. Listening to your body. Listening basically. to your body, and and I'm not a good example of this. It's having the courage to pick up the phone and get checked because I mm -hmm. I've spent many many months not doing that. God, I think we're all you know <laughs> we're all because, a little guilty of that. And it's so easy when someone says just get it checked. Yeah. And I kind of still want to say, you've no idea how frightening that feels. Of course. So yeah. it's somehow digging deep and overcoming and thinking, I, I can do this. I can pick up the phone. I can make that call. Listen, good luck on Sunday. But for anyone who wants to donate, yes. could you tell us where we should go? It's yes. for the Royal Marsden Cancer Hospital. The Royal Marsden Cancer Charity. So the Royal Marsden Hospital, the funds go towards the incredible advances, the amazing support that patients like me Right, okay. Um, they gain. go to limit, Limitless? So, yeah, in my Instagram bio, in my, in my bio, there's all the details. And, yeah, I'm fundraising for them with, you know, such love and appreciation for all they do for so many of us. So is there anything uh, your partner, your children, your loved ones can do to, to help? I think, I think if you've got a loved one, a friend who's had a diagnosis, I think mm -hmm. the really important thing to remember is that yeah, initially they're going to be bombarded with offers of help, hopefully. It's exhausting when you're, when you're on treatment, emotionally, physically. So just give an offer help without expectation. Right. Know that if you're not being responded to, don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. Those just checking in. And the thing not, to, maybe the thing to think about not doing is very genuinely people say, oh, look, just let me know. I'm here. If you need anything, just let me know. You don't let that person know because none of us like to ask for help. Of course, none yeah. of us feel that we want to be a burden. So actually, rather than leaving it to them, just be that friend who checks in consistently, but again with no expectation, and know that you know, even after the initial treatments happened, it's six months down the line. It's it's the months after when the help and the support is still needed. And when just, you suddenly, yeah. Yeah, it's not just the kind of those early days, but it's kind of the, it's the random acts. It's the, I'm in the supermarket, I'm popping by, what can I get you? Yeah. Thinking ahead or mm -hmm. I'm going to drop round or I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to ask what help he or she needs. I'm just going to come up with something. For me, it was all about anyone who offered help with the kids. That was a huge kind of, Right, we're picking them up on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. You're going to get to sleep for a few hours. And it's like, that is priceless, <laughs> yes. you know. But it's, it's just thinking, thinking ahead and thinking in the long term and not taking it personally if you don't get a response. Perfect. Such good advice, yeah. I feel. 
Emma, it was so lovely to have you, you with us today. Good Thank luck on so Sunday. Much. That's it for today. Thank you so much, Emma, Summer, Renee, Adalia, and of course, Lou and Charlotte. On the next show, we have some fab content with fashion from Laura Black, everything you need to know about cosmetic treatments with two of the very best doctors out there, some more seasonal food with Summer, and things we love with the team. You won't want to miss out. In the meantime, we would love it if you could comment below, give us a thumbs up, and do subscribe if you haven't yet. Have a fab day wherever you are.